Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steven Hour and we are here with a movie review. Today we will be reviewing the Batman 1966 movie in the continuation of the Batman 66 episode uh, review series and also as a movie review, uh, movie review. So this will be a part of two things. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's get into a little bit of background before the movie. Now, before the movie's release, the first season of Batman wrapped up and was hugely popular and really cultivated the phenomenon. Now, the movie was actually supposed to be before the show. It was meant to sort of, uh, it sort of broadcasted overseas and make people interested in the show. But of course, the se the show was first, and the season went second. So when you view it in all, so when you view it, you could easily watch the movie first, then the TV show, which is how I personally like to view it. But of course, I'm reviewing everything in the day they were released. So this came between season one and season two. With a bigger budget than they ever had on the TV show, they were able to introduce other things other than the Batmobile, such as the Batcopter, the Batbow a new version of the Bat Cycle, and many more. It was also that the movie would have not one, not two, not three, but four of the most popular villains on the show. Uh, with a big budget, and after filming, it was released in theatres. And the question is, how did it do, how good is it, and how do I personally feel about the, about the film? Before that, let's get into the cast. We have, of course... Um, Adam West and Burt Ward returning for the role as Batman and Robin slash Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. We also have uh, we also have our uh, Stafford Rep as uh, Chief Miles O'Hara, and in the role of Commissioner Gordon we had Neil Hamilton, again reprising their roles from the show. We also have Alan Napier in the role of Alfred, again reprising his role from the show, and. <clears throat> We also have uh, Maggie Blake as Aunt Harriet, again reprising her role from the show. Also, we have uh, three villains from the show reprising their role, uh, roles from the show. We have the Joker, the Penguin, and the Riddler, portrayed by Cesar Romero, Burgess Meredith, and Frank Gorshin, respectively. Here we have also Catwoman as the fourth villain of the film. Now, interesting fact, in the TV show for the first two seasons, and the season before this movie, Julie Newmar actually portrayed the Catwoman, but she was sadly unavailable at the time. So instead, they hired uh, our former Miss America, uh, Lee Merriweather, to not only portray Catwoman in the show, in the movie, but also the villain, her other, her other identity as Miss Kitka. Already, she plays Catwoman differently as a more of a serious straight female femme fatale and almost as an almost cold something that was unlike Julie Newmar at all in other words she does what every actress should do make your own unique stamp on the role and that's what she did other characters that we were introduced to include the three henchmen of the film Bluebeard Morgan and Quetch essentially act as our henchmen of the film and are portrayed by Gil Perkins, Dick Crockett, and George Selway. Selway, hopefully that is pronounced right. Uh, we also here have um, <clears throat> and uh, the vice uh, vice admiral, um, vice admiral portrayed by Milton Fron, and Commodore Schmidt Lab portrayed by. Beginnold Denny and essentially kind of drives a little bit of the film. Anyway, with the cast out of the way, let's get on to a unique thing on the cast. The movie also had the famous window cameo in which we got to see um, character actor George Caesar. Again, he he's not really that huge. He just had he's a famous character actor with numerous television and movie appearances, and he's really there just for a nice little gag. To be honest. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get to let's get to the actual uh, review of the film plot. The our episode now the movie begins with this opening where we got to see the cast. It's all bright and colourful, campy, tongue in cheek. It's all fun. We then cut to um 
Batman and Robin driving all the way back, well, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, I should say, driving to Wayne Manor, where they slide down the bat poles, and here we get to find out that they have this special device when they slide down the bat poles, they flip it, where their clothes immediately change from normal, from their normal clothes to their bat costumes. They then hop in the Batmobile and drive off, where they end up going to the airport, and they fly at the Batcopter. Again, this film had a far bigger budget than they ever did on the show. They then fly around the Batcopter all over Gotham, it's nice and fun, and eventually make their way out to sea where they see this yacht, which is they've been called out to do. Called out to sea. They then make their way there, but suddenly the boat disappears, just as Batman is on the ladder making his way down into the water. And as the Batcopter is lifted up, his leg is being attacked by a shark. And of course, Batman manages to free himself with the help of Robin when using the bat shark repellent spray <laughs> i'm not kidding and just as the shark that goes with batman's leg it falls to the water and explodes batman then has a press conference and a lot of fun things happen here he's trying to deflect all that what's happened out there uh the kidnapping the boat the whole thing and we also get to see miss kicker a news reporter who of course asked for batman to take off his cow and of course batman and here we get to find out that batman is a duly deputized agent of the law along with robin they're not masked vigilantes, not really. They help law enforcement. Eventually, they ask for everyone that that is enough time they have for them and, you know, a good day to everyone. They then all leave. Batman then reveals that the whole thing was a trap to kill him and Robin, whilst Commodore Schmidtler had actually been, um, hij had been hijacked and taken somewhere else. They don't have to figure out who's possibly behind this, but they have four people currently, you know, on the loose. The Joker, the Riddler, the Penguin, and Catwoman. And each has a unique MO that could possibly point to them. Such as the fact that there was a shark and the whole thing was rather fishy could point to Penguin. But it happened at sea, sea for Catwoman. The shark was pulling Batman's leg, the Joker. Or, could sin or the whole thing could easily add up to a sinister riddle. Realizing and fearing that the possibility that all four could be behind this, and they then race to the back cave to do more detective work. We then see Miss Kitka go to the bar, uh, go to a um a bar on the waterfront, and it's a, and there's these fun little gags of what you would see at a bar: people drinking, a waiter throwing a drunk person out, a fight breaking out, people dancing, people eating. It's all fun. There's these gags that they somehow manage to make work. As he makes it, as she makes her way up, she then meets a pirate, who says hello, Catwoman, revealing her real name. Eventually, we get to see how all the villains interact with themselves. The Riddler downgrading Penguin for using an exploding sh uh, shark. And basically, I like how these three guys uh, have these big egos. Like, the Joker is just playing around. The Riddler is upset at Penguin. And essentially, Penguin up at Riddler was saying, Oh, could you do anything better? But they all, and it, it all stops as soon as Catwoman throws her cat on the table. And immediately, these three are scared. Essentially, these three guys have big egos and a bit crazy, but Catwoman is the reason holding them together. Eventually, it is revealed that these three are in cahoots for a big caper, but, and of course, Catwoman, of course, reveals that they did not know that she indeed was uh, Catwoman when she was in the press conference and berates Penguin for the fact that Batman ain't dead. Hell, his boots didn't even look damp. They then reveal that they do have Commodore Schmidt Lab hostage, hostage, and also... However, he hasn't realized he's been kidnapped, and all he does is ring for his tea. The Joker then takes Commodore Schmidt Lab's tea to him, and it's a nice fun scene, a little ch and tongue in cheek, and I like how he doesn't know that he's been kidnapped at all, and it turns out that the reason they kidnapped Commodore Schmidt Lab was for his invention. However, they can't move on for their big caper unless Batman and Robin have been taken care of. And realizing that Batman will probably figure out how they made that ship disappear and possibly find out a clue to where they are, they must immediately hurry out to where it is and stop him. As of course, Penguin orders his henchmen, who are sent up as pirates, to quickly get in their submarine and go out to sea. And it's clear that the Penguin is the leader of the group. Even though Catwoman kind of keeps all the boys in check, Penguin's really leading the crew. Which makes sense, he's the, he's the type of person you would expect to really lead a crew like this. Batman, of course, then do some investigating work when they look through the pictures on the Batcopter they've taken of the event in the first in the opening of the film, realizing that there's this little boy, like this little thing out at sea, and realizing that maybe that thing could have produced a cat. I um, 
a projector from that and realizing that that's their possible lead that then make their way to the bat boat and drive out to open sea but just as that the penguins take in a submarine which is really a fun which is really fun how the submarine literally has penguin flippers making it go it, it essentially the submarine looks like a penguin and it's really fun eventually the guys make their way out to sea uh out to sea just as batman and robin do to investigate the um the scenario yeah the whole thing but then suddenly batman and robin are magnetized to the boy boy and penguin orders his men to fire missiles at the boy but batman uses his radio to send out a frequency resulting in the missiles exploding after a few attempts few attempts to repulverize the torpedoes they then fire another one but the machine that batman's using to repulverize them is growing dead and the villains are laughing because they realize that it's getting through and they then hear the, the thing explode they then surface but they find that batman and robin and the bat boat are gone it's then revealed that an octopus jumped itself in front of the missile to prevent the two from exploding it is a funny and very ridiculous way of batman getting out of a death trap but as you see in the series batman's had lots of funny ways of getting out of tight situations like this he then calls up essentially the navy office and finds out that a submarine with pre-atomic weapons have been sold to a man named P. Anguin and has left them with a post office box number. Ah, realizing that, and I like the scene how, and after that, missiles come out of the ocean, revealing riddles in the sky in forms of a joke. Not, not, not only revealing that the Riddler is there, but also revealing that the Joker is also involved, and along with the Penguin, but the riddles sum up uh, essentially set uh, pretty much the two riddles have to uh, really combine the answer to both riddles says what kind of creature gobbles up a bird in a tree they realize it's a cat rather than the cat wall must be behind it but they're trying to figure out what they will want try and take over the world try and take over gotham no only two or maybe even one could try that the whole country no maybe three but four must be the entire world we'll find out what their goal is they plan to kidnap all the united world leaders who are in gotham today well gotham they send plan to kidnap him and hold him for ransom but they can't do it with batman and robin in their way the riddler played by frank gorshin then comes up with this you know, way to do it and he steals the show in this moment saying how he plans how they plan to use catwoman as kid cut to kidnap bruce wayne a wealthy millionaire and lead a trap that will have batman and robin come in which they will be on the joker's jack-in-the-box and be launched out into the sea and be eaten by an exploding octopus and i like how Frank gorshin is just fully charismatic and full of energy in this scene eventually the plan goes exactly how we would expect miss kitka goes to bruce wayne and essentially bruce becomes smitten with her it's then revealed that she's been targeted by the riddler who's left her some riddles and they manage to deduce that she's threatening to harm Miss Kitka, who is Russian. Because of the riddle saying that some that essentially Riddler's gonna harm a, a person who is Russian, realize Miss Kitka. They then come up with a plan to you know, to prevent um you know to apprehend the Riddler. And as this is happening, Bruce and Miss Kitka are on a date in order to draw him out. Throughout this whole scene, um it's really goofy silly there's even a scene where the riddler the joker and the penguin and all the and all his men are on jetpack umbrellas flying in the sky it's really funny it really is and the plan that batman has actually fails he has to fight off the riddler the penguin the joker and all his men one-handed but eventually ends up getting captured along with miss kitka just as uh, bruce wayne has been able to kidnap with miss kitka and his kidnap has been reported however the, the villains are mad as batman has not yet dashed into the trap however bruce does manage to get his way out of the trap but doesn't know where miss kitka is and but sadly the trap does end up killing one of the henchmen as one of the henchmen ends up landing on the joker's jack in the box when he's flown out the window and into the arms of an exploding octopus batman bruce managed to make his escape and makes his way back to Wayne Manor, where he sees Gordon and Robin. Tells them how he escaped at the aid of Batman, and says that he must get to police uh, must get to police headquarters as Batman might be calling him. He, he then leaves. 
Bruce and Dick end up sliding down the bat poles in bat costumes and makes their way to the hi to the criminal's hideout. Realizing that the plan is falling apart, Penguin comes up with a new plan. Uh, new plan with ordering the Joker to get Commodore Schmidt lab down into the submarine, and the Riddler brings in the five uh, guinea pig henchmen and uses uh, Commodore Schmidt lab's invention to dehydrate them, essentially turning them into dust. He then puts them in these vials and it's plans to attack um, Batman at the Batcave. Just as this is happening, Batman makes their way to the waterfront where they get to the hideout hideout after they do a back climb up the wall where they meet of course where of course we have the window cameo. Just as they get up above saying how they can't you know, of the little gag how, you know, alcohol is bad and saying that, you know, rather be dead than untrust his own eyes. Some guy pokes his head out the window, looks up and says, You're right, honey, there was somebody walking up the wall. It's a funny little gag. They get their way up, but they see a bomb. Robin makes his way out. Batman runs in, grabs the bomb, tries to find his kicker, not there, and ends up running all over the dock trying to, to try to get rid of the bomb without harming anyone. It's a really funny scene, and it ends with the line where Batman's saying, Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Batman manages to defuse the bomb. By use the bomb, but the real eyes of the cr that all the villains have left, along with Myth Kitka, and have no clue. Eventually, the Penguin turns up, dressed up as Commodore Schmidt Lab, trying to pass off as him, but they realize it's not. He does, however, request that they go to the Batcave to verify who he is. They then do, but they give him bad amnesia gas to knock him out. They take him to the Batcave, and whilst there, the Penguin asks for a drink of water and goes to the fountain, where he then Batman manages to make his way to the Batcave along with Robin and the Penguin. The Penguin asks her to have a drink of water and sends him to this sort of uh, fountain, which he then uses to fill his dehydrated men with some water, but however, it's used on heavy radioactive water. They then end up, you know, being rehydrated, and the Penguin orders his men to fight off Batman and Robin. However, as soon as they even land a punch or hit each other, they then disapparate. Batman comes to the conclusion, because the Penguin must have accidentally used the heavy water, it left them on a un highly unstable condition on it, and it reduced them to antimatter, essentially killing them. This is, a, again, we're, this is a movie, and yet we've already had six people essentially get killed. However, Batman manages to convince the Penguin that he still believes he's Commodore Schmidt lab and said that he must have been brainwashed. The Penguin, finding confusing on all this, comes down and they take him, you know, take him for a drive. He then gets in some bat wake where they wake up, but the Batmobile pretends to break down. Eventually, the Penguin uses knockout gas, knocking out Batman and Robin, and steals their Batmobile. However, this is what Batman wanted. He then quickly hops on the bat bike, goes to the airport, and gets in the Batcopter and flies, flies away, trying to track down the Batmobile. However, just as this is happening in the Penguin submarine, the Riddler's getting anxious and needs to fire off some riddles to the chagrin of the rest of the villains. He then fires off a missile where he's riddles, but it ends up hitting the Batcopter and ends up causing it to crash. The Riddler and his goons are seeing this up in the telescope, and the Riddler, and I like how Frank Ocean's just gleeing at it, thinking he's killed them and essentially succeeding where all the other villains have failed. However, Batman and Robin survive their crash, Survived their crash courtesy of landing on a bunch of a pile of mattresses. Yes, I'm not making this up. But they look up in the sky and see two riddles. However, they managed. However, they managed to deduce that the riddles, how illogical it is, that they are targeting United World Organization. Uh, World Organization and Batman and Robin Bat Run there, which is really funny. The Riddler, the Joker, and Catwoman make their way to the back entrance of the United World building. And the penguin also makes his way there by gassing a, by gassing all the security with a bunch of penguin gas. Again, it's a nice kooky scene, kooky scene, and they make the way to the United World building uh, section where all the leaders are and dehydrate them. They put them in vials and essentially plan to kidnap them. Batman and Robin make that just in time, but however, Catwoman says if they take one step closer, Miss Kitka will die, and Batman hesitates, not knowing that Catwoman and Miss Kitka are the same person. But then end up chasing them, but then end up chasing them, but find out that they have escaped on their submarine. There's only one trump card left. They need to take their bat boat immediately and pray that they do not fail. 
just as that's happening, we'll find out that they plan to that they plan to ransom each member for one million each from each country, and and essentially that's what it is, ransom them. And it's a pretty ambitious plot, kidnapping literally every major world leader. Just as this is happening, Batman and Robin are on their bat boat chasing them by submarine, and essentially thanks to the bat bazooka, force the submarine to surface. And just as this is happening, they all surface, the Riddler, the Joker, the Penguin, and all their men have a huge bat fight on the sub, and it's really funny, it's really kooky, and it's ex everything except from the fight from the TV show. Just as that's happening, Catwoman makes his, is making her way out, and pushes both Batman and Robin into the water, along, and, but despite that, Batman and Robin win the fight by tying up all the boys, and end up chasing Catwoman back onto the boat, where they end up catching up with her, but also revealing that Catwoman and Miss Kicker are the same person, was Batman absolutely heartbroken. However, despite that, he orders Robin to, to snap on the bat cuffs. He then goes to the radio and orders the Coast Guard to come and come to the submarine and essentially arrest everyone on board. But just as that happening, he sees that the vial with all the powdered, essentially victims on, and quickly grabs it just in just in case. And just as that is happening, Commodore Schmidtlack comes out. And wonders what's going on. He ends up tripping and resulting in all the dust being broken and sneezed away. Batman and Robin are horrified at this, but they but they still try to fix it. They have recuperated all the dust and tried to divide them into their separate vials and planned a little experiment to revive them. And I like how it's goofy, but the whole world here is watching to see what's happening. It's really funny. We even have the president online for this. However, Batman and Robin succeed in restoring everyone, and I like how there's montage with the world, like cheering, how, you know, it's succeeded, they've done it, it's, it's funny as hell. However, and I also like as they're rejuvenated, these people are still arguing with each other like, it, like nothing has ever happened, it's really funny as hell. Batman and Robin then end up leaving by the, by the window and sliding down the bat ropes down the building. And that's where we end our movie. Overall, the Batman movie is exactly what you expect from the first season, but even though the first season was more serious, this was really fully light-hearted and campy, and the idea was to promote the series, and honestly, it succeeded in what it wanted to do. It's fun, it's goofy, it's overall silly. That's all I can say about this movie, and the performances by everyone here are great. The Riddler, the Joker, and the Penguin, played by their respected actors, are absolutely fantastic. Burt Ward and Robin are pretty great too. Bert Waters Robin was great, Adam West as Batman was pretty great, and Lee Merriweather managed to do a unique and different interpretation of Catwoman. She didn't try to fully copy Julie Newmar, but she did make her own characteristics to make her performance stand out. However, she will not be portraying Catwoman in Season 2, as Julie Newmar will later return to, to fully be back in the heel she made popular in Season 1. It made sense for the movie to have more than one villain, and it made sense with the Penguin, the Riddler, and the Joker, as A, they had multiple appearances in the first season, and they were the most popular. It made sense to also have another female villain, but considering there were really only two, and only a Catwoman to be a really good one at all introduced, it made sense to introduce her. These four will be known as the four anchor villains of the show. The four main villains we all enjoyed watching come back. I like how the villains just interact with each other, you know, and it made sense for the Penguin to be the leader of the group, with the Riddler and the Joker essentially being the wild cards, and essentially Catwoman holding them all together without them fully going overboard. Uh, now, this is really goofy, it's really silly, and if you're not really into that sort of thing, then you're probably not going to really enjoy the camp factor that this show, went, that this movie is going for. Again, this movie's purpose was to promote the series. And between season one, and this film came out between seasons one and two, and really made Batman a huger phenomenon than it already was. And the film was a moderate success success at the box office. It did have a bit of mixed reviews, but overall it did succeed in what it wanted to do. Promote Batman overseas, you know, and basically promote people into watching the show. And there we have it, that was my review of Batman 66. A really fun film, nothing spectacular spectacular, nothing really groundbreaking for the character, but it is the first time Batman was put on film and basically promoted Batman to be a worldwide phenomenon. After the success of this film, the studio <coughs> immediately ran into season, got in production to season 2. Now something that's always been noted, season, now 
According to Adam West's biography, between after the movie, the filmmakers or the creators of the show didn't stop to figure out what they wanted to do with the series, but instead just jumped in and essentially wanted to create this big, to, you know, just do what made the film great, but not stopping to wonder what they wanted to do. And essentially, this is what's said to really let the show down for. But with Batman being a huge success in the later years of 66, the first half of season 2 would be released, with the other half of season 2 released in the following year of 67. So anyway, tune in back, tune in next time where we continue on our Batman 66 movie, uh, Batman 66 episode reviews. And if you haven't seen this film, give it a watch. It's a real hoot. Anyway, this has been the Stephen Hour, and tune in next time for the same Stephen time, same Stephen channel. So long for now.